Hi everybody, my name is Olivia Gudanitz, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button because I post weekly interviews with industry professionals. Today we are here with Corey Ross. Welcome. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Corey Ross is a producer. He's been linked to shows such as Hair, Cats, Potted Potter, Evil, Evil Dead. Dead. <laughs> there we go. If you're an active theater goer, I'm sure you've seen something. So what's new and upcoming right now? Well, we have a very large scale Potted Potter tour, um, which includes a run in Toronto this summer. Okay. Uh, we'll have Evil Dead going out again um, this fall. By the way, happy belated birthday. You know, it's been about a month. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you do I your do research. My, yeah, exactly. So hopefully it was a good one. Yep. So Corey Ross is a producer of Starbox Entertainment. Did I say that right? Yep. Awesome. So you founded this company a little over a decade ago. Correct. For people who don't know what Starbox is, pretty much they produce, manage, and promote performing arts shows across Canada, Mexico, Europe, and the United US, States. Uh, the Middle East, so pretty much everywhere. But I, principally we focus on NAFTA, so we're in Canada, the US, okay. and Mexico. I wanted to ask why you chose theater and a profession and a business in the performing arts. First of all, it's, it's risky to be in it in the first place, let alone start a business and be successful. So how did I end up doing it, being in business for myself? It was kind of how I started. And so I don't really haven't really known any other way. There was a, a brief period that I worked for Massey and Roy Thompson Hall um, uh, in the late 90s and, and turn of the century. <laughs> uh, and I was successful as a promoter there, doing all of their concert business. Um, but I started to get frustrated um, with sort of working inside of a company and not really having control and being able to do whatever I want. And so what I love about running my own company is that we just sort of take on the projects that I love and that I want to do and what interests me and so you know the next year we're looking at television producing which oh, is something exciting. we've never done before but yeah, we've got expanding. a project that I'm interested in, in in that world and we're looking at um, presenting an art exhibit which I've never done before either so wow. I sort of wake up and say hey I'd like to try a new challenge and that really has been what my career has been is just trying one new challenge after another. That's great. Do you find that you're sort of like a talent scout in a way? Do you have people like sending you emails and postcards to come see their shows in hopes that you will kind of produce it? There's more of that as I've <laughs> progressed in my career. At the beginning it was always me finding, finding. stuff and then really pushing to get it and to make it happen. Um, now there's more volume of stuff that comes in, but there's still a lot of my finding something that's interesting to me. And what does it take to be a producer in Toronto, do you think? Um, I guess one thing you might try is starting working for a not-for-profit, um, but uh, or for the Mervishes or for our company, I guess, <laughs> yeah. uh, to learn some stuff. Um, but um, but if, if you've already done that or if you're not able to do that or not inclined to do that, which in my case, I really I didn't want to spend a lot of time as an employee, um, so if you're not doing that, here are the two things that I, that I think were really important to me, aside from having the chutzpah and the nerve and, the, and a little bit of money. And, and so if you came to my house, and you would see the bookshelves lined with virtually every book that's been published, um, a lot of biographies on uh, theater folks and Broadway, um, not just theater. I read about the music industry and a lot about the record business. Um, I read about the film business, so I, I... Just being involved in all aspects. So reading a lot, both online and yeah. books. Uh, so number one. Number two, I think what's been important to me is finding mentors. So even when I was on my own, one of the early things that happened that was kind of an interesting opportunity was I ended up being able to partner with and co-produce a show with the guys that are now Live Nation, the concert promoters, but oh, at the cool. time they were called MCA Concerts. And what I got out of that experience was some very basic stuff that they didn't teach me at school and they didn't, <laughs> they, you know, I, I didn't understand how do you do a budget and how do you figure out what things cost and how do you figure out what the revenue is going to be and the ticket sales and the sales tax and all of that stuff. But all That's along great. the road I found people, interesting people to either partner with or connect to on some level who have been fabulous mentors for me. That's amazing guys. So you never know who's going to be your mentor. So just get out there, say yes to opportunities and you never know. Um, I wanted to ask you, I was reading a few articles online about a company that promised you A-list stars and didn't deliver. 
there's obviously ups and downs with any business. Has that been resolved? Okay, so that hasn't been resolved and I can't talk about it a lot because of there's course. a lawsuit. Um, but um, what I can tell you is that being in business is, can, can be difficult. That was, that was an extremely difficult experience oh, for me. Um, and not everyone out there is a good guy. There's fraudsters. Uh, and somehow I think that this business is particularly attractive to them. Uh, and People um, are attracted to success, right? And, yeah, and, and I think that sort of, you know, part of the, part of the key lesson um, um, for me out of all that is that you have to evolve your business to avoid those situations and to survive those situations. Yeah, you'll definitely come out stronger. Yeah. <laughs> and before I let you go, if there was another job you could do on set, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, one of the things that they always say is if you can do anything else, go do that. <laughs> um, I have heard that multiple times yeah, and here uh, we are still doing what we love. I mean, I, I think the, the parts of the producer role that I excel at um, most um, is probably on the marketing end of it, so I come at producing um, uh, more from a marketing end than from an artist direction. There's a lot of producers who come from an artist direction. Um, so I guess if I was doing something else, certainly what I would be qualified to do would be, <laughs> yeah. it would be in the marketing world. Awesome. Hi, I'm Corey Ross, and one of the most important things when you're a theater producer and you're trying to market your shows is to come up with the graphic image, the poster, that uh, will make the show work and will communicate what it is to the audience and get people excited about it. So I thought I'd show a few examples of posters that we've done for our shows, ones that have been successful and ones that haven't been successful. So this first one is Dee Snyder's Rock and Roll Christmas. This was not a successful poster uh, and we struggled with the show. Um, it was tough for people to understand what it was. It's very busy. It's hard to read it very quickly when you're looking at it. Um, and, uh, and as a result, as I said, we struggled with the show. Um, we did a show called Love Lies Bleeding, which was about Elton John. Uh, and this one, I think we were, the show was successful, and I believe the poster was successful. It both communicates the size and scope of the show, because you can see all of the cast uh, in the poster. Uh, but it also manages to feature Elton John front and center, um, and yet sort of creates this very cool um, graphic that, that explained a little bit about what the show was emotionally um, as well as physically what was on stage. The most successful poster that we've done uh, was for Potted Potter and what's interesting is this, this we developed this over years. We started with more like this image um, and then ended up um, here uh, and what we really wanted to communicate here was A, that there, there's a parody, a, a funny show, a hilarious show about Harry Potter and so that's at the top of the poster. Um, we managed to capture our New York Times review and encapsulate that into two words that really do describe the show and gloriously goofy. The logo pops, the owl is looking down at the logo, um, and then if you can see along the bottom, um, we support the quality of the show with all of our critics, well that's not all of our critics picks, but select critics picks where um, we've had um, great reviews. And so what's really successful with this poster is it really gets it all very quickly and captures the eye. Well, thank you for your time, Corey. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you guys enjoyed this interview, hit the like button, subscribe, and tell your friends. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.